Hi everybody, this is part three of the lecture to accompany chapter three in your textbook. Now that you're familiar with the basic patterns of deductive and inductive arguments, let's figure out how to tell a good argument from a poor one. Let's look first at deductive arguments. One of the key concepts in deductive logic is deductive validity. In everyday conversation, we sometimes use the word valid to mean good or true, as in you've got a valid point. But that's not what valid means here. Remember that truth and logical consistency aren't the same thing. So what is validity? In a deductive argument, the arguer claims that the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises. A valid argument is one in which this really is the case. So it is an argument in which it is impossible for all the premises to be true and for the conclusion to be false. In other words, as it says here, if the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true. The conclusion follows necessarily from the premises, and the premises provide logically conclusive grounds for the truth of the conclusion. It is logically inconsistent to assert all the premises, but deny the conclusion. It's also impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. So validity, as it applies to deductive arguments, is always meant in this precise technical sense. Remember, the validity of an argument has nothing to do with the truth of its premises. It has to do with if the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises. If the premises guarantee the conclusion to be true, if they are true, then the argument is valid. Here's what I'm talking about. All squares are circles. All circles are triangles. Therefore, all squares are triangles. None of that is true, obviously. However, this is a valid argument because it is structured correctly, and if indeed the premises were true, then there would be no choice but to accept the conclusion as true. I cannot stress this enough. Validity is not truth. This argument is obviously false. It is false premises and a false conclusion, but it is valid. So what is an invalid deductive argument? Well, we looked at a couple in part two, the denying the antecedent and affirming the consequent patterns. It's basically when they have bad deductive form, and so the premises do not guarantee the conclusion. Look at this example, but don't be fooled. All dogs are animals. Lassie is an animal, therefore Lassie is a dog. Now it might look good, but it's invalid. And the reason it looks good is because both the premises are true. All dogs are animals, and, well, from what we know of Lassie, Lassie is an animal, right? Um, here's the thing. Lassie is a dog, which is the conclusion, does not really follow from the premises because the only information we have about Lassie in this argument is that Lassie is an animal. What if Lassie here referred to my pet iguana? The premises would still be true, and yet the conclusion would be false. You have to get rid of your assumption that is nowhere in the argument that we're talking about the TV dog whose name is Lassie. So if we change it to Jub-Jub, all dogs are animals, Jub-Jub is an animal, therefore Jub-Jub is a dog, it becomes obviously an invalid pattern. And it is the invalid pattern called affirming the consequent that we looked at in part two. So hopefully you can see why this argument is invalid. Okay, now you know if a deductive argument is valid or invalid. Now let's add truth into the mix. An argument that is valid and has all true premises is what is known as a sound argument. If it is sound, then the conclusion must be true. In this example, all dogs are mammals, Fido is a dog, therefore Fido is a mammal. We know that the first premise is true. Then as long as Fido is actually referring to a dog, the second premise is also true. So if those two things are true and the structure of the argument is correct, then we must accept the conclusion that Fido is a mammal. If, on the other hand, an argument is valid but has one or more false premises, then it is called an unsound argument. This example, all dogs are cats, Fido is a dog, therefore Fido is a cat, 
is a valid argument because it's structurally correct and the conclusion logically follows from the premises. However, the first premise, all dogs are cats, is not true. So the argument is unsound. So arguments are valid or invalid based on their pattern and structure and sound or unsound based on the truth of their premises. We're now going to move on to looking at inductive arguments, but before we get there, just know that validity and soundness don't really apply to inductive arguments. All of them are invalid and unsound, but don't worry. We have other ways to determine if an inductive argument is a good one or not. Where inductive arguments are concerned, we are not looking for exactness because we're dealing with likelihoods and probabilities. So we can look at these arguments to see if they are strong or weak. A strong inductive argument is one in which the premises, if true, make the conclusion likely or probable. The premises provide probable but not conclusive grounds for the truth of the conclusion. Here's a common inductive form. Most Bs are P, X is a B, therefore probably X is a P. In this example, all recent presidents have been college grads, therefore the next president will be a college grad. In it, the arguer is giving information in the premise that leads to a prediction about the next president. Since it's unlikely we would elect someone with only a high school degree to the presidency, although it could happen, this is a fairly strong argument. So what is a weak inductive argument? It's one in which the premises do not provide good evidence for the conclusion. Here's one. All previous popes have been men. Therefore, probably the next pope will be female. Now, this is not to say that the next pope won't be a woman, but the premise that all previous popes have been men doesn't really give good evidence to come to the conclusion that the next one's going to be a woman. In the next example, Wing Chung is the owner of Happy Sushi, so he's probably Hispanic. Pretty obvious that Wing Chung is probably not Hispanic, although who knows, but the evidence of his name and his business doesn't really lead to that conclusion. So these are both weak inductive arguments. Just like validity has nothing to do with the truth of a deductive argument, strength or weakness has nothing to do with the truth of an inductive argument. Here's an example of a strong inductive argument that's false. All previous presidents have been female, therefore the next president will be female. This is a strong argument, but it has false premises. Then we have an example of a weak inductive argument that has true premise. Most presidents have been married, that's true. Therefore, the next president will probably be male. The premise that most presidents have been married isn't good reason to accept the conclusion that the next president is going to be a male. So you can have inductive strength with false premises and inductive weakness with true premises, but what you won't have is inductive strength with true premises that lead to a probably false conclusion. However, there are degrees of strength in inductive arguments. Some inductive arguments are stronger than others because of their premises. Look at this example. The last five presidents were male, therefore the next president will be male. That's got some strength to it. However, it's weaker than this one. All previous presidents have been male, therefore the next president will be male. In this example, the second argument is stronger than the first one because the evidence is better, more inclusive. We have more examples of male presidents than just five. Now, this is different than deductive reasoning. In deductive reasoning, there's no degrees of validity. A deductive argument is either valid or invalid. No two valid arguments differ in how valid they are, however, Inductive arguments can vary in terms of how strong they are, and some inductively strong arguments are stronger than others. Now we're going to add truth into the mix in inductive reasoning. In the case of inductive arguments, they are either cogent or uncogent. A cogent argument is inductively strong and has all true premises. An uncogent argument is either weak has false premises or both. So let's look at these arguments. 
Here is a cogent argument. In other words, it's inductively strong and it has true premises. No U.S. president has been a skateboarding champ. Well, that's pretty true. Therefore, the next U.S. president will probably not be a skateboarding champ. You can come to that conclusion, and it's very likely that this conclusion is indeed the case. So here's an uncogent argument. All previous U.S. presidents have been Democrats. Therefore, the next U.S. president will probably be a Democrat. Obviously, it is not true that all previous U.S. presidents have been Democrats. That is a false premise, and the conclusion cannot be accepted. So, let's summarize what you just learned about deductive and inductive arguments. A deductive argument is either valid, in other words, it follows the proper form and the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises, or invalid. If it's invalid, it's automatically also unsound, but a valid argument can be either sound or unsound. If it has all true premises that lead to a true conclusion, then it's sound. If it doesn't, then it's unsound. An inductive argument can be strong, in other words, the premises give good reasons to accept the conclusion, or weak. If it's weak, it's automatically uncogent. But a strong argument can be either cogent or uncogent. If it has true premises that lead to a true conclusion or a possibly true conclusion, then it's cogent. If it has any false premises, it's uncogent. So this has been a difficult chapter. Now you can always come back and review this information if you need to, and you'll be doing exercises on your own and in class that are gonna help you understand these concepts. This is the end of the lecture to accompany chapter three.